So last week we were working on the mock pit, the cock up, <laughs> the mock up of our cockpit. <clears throat> and we're not done yet. We're letting it simmer for a while before we move on to the next iterations of it. I am anxious to start building the cockpit. First, we have to finish building the traveler bulkhead. But in the meantime, this week, we're going to step inside the boat and work on some stuff forward of the mast. My name is Matt. Follow along as I turn Duracell, the legendary ocean racing sailboat, into a comfortable cruising home. This winter, we were planning on starting to build out the interior of the boat because when the rain starts, I want to be inside working instead of out in the rain or in the wind and the cold. Be a little bit warmer inside here. I want to start at the bow, work my way aft, and so the first project will be our stateroom, our forward stateroom, which is up here. The first step will be to cut out the floorboards. So I'm going to cut out the floorboards here in this area and a little bit more aft. And then build a bulkhead that will separate the forward stateroom from the rest of the boat. I'm getting anxious to finish the doghouse, and so that means finishing the travel bulkhead and gluing on the roof, finishing up the beams and everything, and I can't do that until I install this this giant bulkhead that's going to make our forward stateroom. So that's going to be the next project is, is starting to cut out these floorboards and build a build a bulk, big bulkhead for our stateroom. Why can't we keep the existing floorboards? For a few reasons. I want to be able to access the bilge. Right now all the floorboards are glued down to the boat and so and they just have these little pie highs to access underneath and I want to be able to have more access to the bilge. I want to paint it, I want to make it really nice so that we can store stuff down there if we want to, um, keep it really dry and everything. I just want to be able to access it really well. The, the existing floorboards are also all balsa cord which is nice for being light and thin, but there's some rot in it. And so I would like to rebuild them, have some, make some really nice floorboards as well, so. Do you think you might uh, find anything interesting under those floorboards? I do, I already know that there will be some interesting as a... Euphemism? Yeah. <laughs> what are you expecting to find? Dead animals. Oh, gross. Yeah. Maybe treasure, too? Uh, maybe, but I doubt it. I've kind of gone through the boat pretty well already. Okay. So. I feel like my plant might have hidden some treasure somewhere in the boat. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Never know. Never know. Matt did not want to film the petrified rat he found, but I'm kind of morbidly curious, so in case you are too. There it is. So we filled these hatch holes a few weeks ago and I never laminated the underside of them, so that's what I'm going to be doing today. The reason I'm doing it is just because the bulkhead that will separate the or make the stateroom forward cuts these hatches in half and it's actually just going to cut this hatch in half that one's going to be a little bit different so in order to get the bulkhead done i have to get these laminated on the underside first um i've actually already swept it with thickened epoxy and left it for an hour or more and it's getting nice and tacky the hard part about doing laminating on the underside of these is that it's hard to get glass to stick 
up there if it's heavy with resin. And so the surface being tacky, I can just stick it up dry and then wet it out in place. Uh, and then we'll vacuum bag them. So that's what we're doing this afternoon. Are you a tiger in the grass? So I used uh, my tick board method to find the shape of the bulkhead that's going to make the forward stateroom in the boat. And so what I did is I had the board that, that board that goes from the ceiling to the floor is the edge of the bulkhead. And then I matched up the tick board line or th the edge of the tick board with the, with the board that's going in the that's in the boat right now and so that makes that the edge of the bulkhead right here and then I use all these crazy lines with reference numbers from my ruler to find the points all the way around the boat and so I'm just gonna make a bunch of points all the way around and then find the shape this is just one way to do it there are many ways to do this it's the way I choose to do it this time
So I'll show you an example of how I'm doing this. So I have all these crazy lines on the on this board. I knew where the last line was and I slowly work my way around finding each line. For example, this is the next line that I have to do. And this is the line, so I line my ruler up with it. And I know that it, I have this little tick off of this line showing 48. That means it matches up with the 48 on this side. And so that I can, I know exactly how far out the ruler goes and I know exactly what angle it's at. And so I leave that here. In fact, I'm going to clamp it. And then I go to the end. And then I'm using this little block. I'm using this little block because my board is three quarters of an inch thick and this corner transfers that, this corner down to the foam. And so that's my point. So then I cross off this number because I know I've done that one. And then I find the next one, which is probably this one here. So I line my board up with, or my ruler up with the line, and then this is 50, it's on this side, so that means I'm using this side of the ruler. Line it up, and then I'll clamp it. Make all these dots all the way around at all the points and then I'll connect all the dots with lines and cut on that line and that'll make the bulkhead, the shape of the bulkhead. Pretty close. Awesome. It's got to be, I got to trim it up on the top. But. Hey, Pazzy, so nice of you to join us. trimming that area that you're standing in you're not building a bulkhead there no that's gonna be like a hallway yeah so the bedroom is here mm -hmm. 
there will be another smaller bulkhead here, and then there's a door right here that goes into our bedroom, like right there. But yeah, and then this space between the mast and the door is like a hallway and a utility like bench for basically my workbench will be right here. So. Yeah, it definitely, it makes the boat feel smaller in a good way, in a cozier way. I mean, it's not quite cozy yet, but no. we'll get there. All right, we have a few Patreons to thank this week. Uh, the first one being Roger, who lives just across the Puget Sound here. He lives on a Cal 34 net from 1977, and he, but he just bought himself a new Corbin 39. It's done in Oregon. He's, it needs a little bit of love, but uh, he's planning on bringing that up. Uh, here soon so thanks a bunch Roger and also thank you to Charles Charles actually became a patreon a few weeks ago and he uh, was in town and came out to the boat uh, got to meet him it was super fun he lives down in Southern California he owns a 41 foot 41 foot hunter that he cruises around down there he's owned many many boats uh, over the course of his life when he started sailing when he was in high school um, but uh, it was super fun to meet him so thank you again very much, Charles. Lastly, thank you to Don, and also thank you to Patrick, who we haven't heard from yet.